Hey there folks, today we're talking about Cascadia, how to play, and if you stick around to the end, you're gonna get some tips on how to maybe get a little better of a score on the game as well. If you do like this content, wanna see more of it, or just wanna support, do like and subscribe. You know, lightly smash that subscribe button, it does help. Thanks a bunch, let's go ahead and dive on into it. All right, so here is Cascadia. Here's the components you've got in the game. Let's show you a setup. So everyone's gonna get one of these tiles right here. So it's gonna have the three different tiles on it. They're all going to be just a touch different, you can see right there. But they're all going to have this tile right here. Um, and when I say this tile, what I mean is they're all gonna have a single tile that only has one uh, animal on it. And it's got the little acorn symbol, which we'll talk about in a second. So all of them are going to have one of those. And then they're going to have two of these other tiles that have multiple things on them. So if we look at all of these tiles right here, they're all going to have that. And we're going to have some different animals. So you can look and you can see that we've got this one has the elk, this one has the bear, this one has the fox, this one has the hawk, and then this one right here has the salmon. So we're gonna have one of each on those. And then each of these tiles are gonna have one of the five different types of um, terrains as well. So we've got the woods, we've got the grasslands, we've got the swamp, we've got the rivers and the mountains. So you're gonna have all five uh, on your tile as well. So they're gonna be a little different, but everyone's gonna have the same thing in that aspect. And again, we've got one, at least one, of each of those animals on here as well. The other thing we're gonna do during setup is we're gonna take four of these tiles, put them on out. We're gonna take four of these uh, tiles of the animals from the bag, these discs, and we're gonna match them up so you can have these four different pairs. I could take these two, these two, these two, or these two. We'll get into that in a second. Then we've got our acorns. Go ahead and put those, I guess those aren't acorns, they're pine cones. Put those on the side right there. And then we're gonna have these round end goals. And I put these discs here just to make it simple and easy to show you all the animals we have. We've got the grizzly bear. So these are the A's right here. So you can play with all A's or you can mix it and match it. There is an A, B, C, and D for every single animal. So you can mix them up quite a bit, a lot of different options for how to score. So these are gonna be bonus points. This is how you get most of your points during the game, uh, but we'll talk about points later on as well. So there are all the animals. If you wanted to play an easier, just family variant, there is this card where you're just trying to match up as many animals of the same kind as you can and you get points based on that. So if it's your first game or if you're playing with some younger players, you wanna make it simple, you can use this. And then on the back, there's a little bit of an intermediate um, variant as well, just to keep it simple, but a touch more. So if you're getting beyond that, then now you've got these cards you can play with. We'll walk through these real quick. So the bears right here, you're looking for pairs of bears. And the, it's gonna be two bears touching each other, but no other bears next to that. So if we look at this card right here, if we had at the end of the game, let's say we had uh, four pairs of bears, then you would be able to, I mean, you would get 27 points. Now, again, they can't be touching each other. Scores for number of pairs of bears with no other bears next to them. Salmon right here, scores for each run per salmon. Runs may not be adjacent to each other. So they're adjacent on one side, but there can't be any others next to it. That's the salmon. The more you get, the more points you get at the end of the game. So if you're able to get seven or more, that's 25 points. These are going to be your hawks, and if they are isolated, so you don't want your hawks touching any other hawks. So if you have eight or more hawks that are not next to any other hawks, that's gonna give you 26 points. And then over here, this is gonna be your elk in a line. And so they have to be in a single straight line to get you points for this one. If you have four elk, and you can have multiple lines, but if you have four elk in a line right here, then that's gonna get you 13 points. Sorry, it's having a hard time focusing. I think it's having a hard time knowing what to focus on. And then over here, we've got foxes, and these are generally pretty weak, if you wanna know one tip up front. Pretty weak, the foxes, uh, but score for each fox, number of unique adjacent animals to it. So you kinda of want your fox in the middle, and then a bunch of other animals around it. So those are the scoring for the A sides of the cards. Now let's dive into how to play on your turn. You're gonna select one pair of these. So I could take this pair right here, 
And then I'm gonna add this on, and I would want to add this on to where it connects to, uh, there's a couple of things. One, I'd want to connect it to uh, this terrain probably. So I could connect it to the woods there, or I could take it and I could connect it over here and it would be connected to the water. So you can connect it however you want. If we wanna put it over here, you can do that, but it's not gonna help out with uh, the terrain points. Another thing that you might wanna do is if I put this here, that might help to get three elk in a row if I'm able to do that. But I do have this and I wanna go ahead and put it there, so I'm breaking that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this here for later on. So that would be your turn. You're gonna put your disc on a spot that has that animal. And then it's going, you're gonna go ahead and just refill it. So we're gonna take one of these, one of these, and put them out there. Then it's the next person's turn. Now, depending on the number of people you have in the game, that determines how many of these you're going to use. So check in the rule book, it does change if you're playing a two, three, or four person game. I think it's up to four is all you can play. Yeah, so if you're playing a two, three, or four person game, it is going to change uh, a little bit. So do check that out. So that's gonna be how you're gonna take your turn right there. And you're just going to keep going and that is the entire game. So we could take this on our next turn and then we could put this right here like so, because that is going to get us terrain types. It's gonna connect both of those, which is kind of cool. Then we put the fox where the fox goes. Now, if you ever take a piece, let's say we took a piece. Let's find a fox out here. Let's adjust ourselves just a little bit. If I took this piece and I put it on and there weren't any foxes out here, I would just discard that. So you could still take it if you really want the tile, um, but I would not suggest doing that unless you really had to. Another couple of things to keep in mind. Let's say we took this piece over here and then we connected this right there. Let's say we put this on this spot right here that has the little um, pine cone. So if you cover one of those spaces, you're going to get a pine cone and you can do a couple of things with these pine cones. One, if you wanted to, you could pay that pine cone to take one tile and then one of these discs that are not adjacent to each other. And so normally you have to choose a pair. I have to choose either these two, these two, these two, or these two. But if I pay a pine cone, right here, I could pay that and I could take a tile and then I could take a disc that is not lined up to it. So that's one thing you can do with these right here. These are also worth one point at the end of the game each for however many you have. So it may be worth hanging on to them for that. The other thing that you can do is you can replace these discs out here. So I could say, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and spend that. And I want to replace these three discs. You can choose, I want to replace one, I want to replace two, I want to replace three, four, whatever you want, you can choose with those. So let's say we replace these two right here. And then we get into the bag, and then we put them on out. So then you would obviously have some new options. Now, if there are ever three of the same animal that is out as a free action, you can say, I want to replace all of these right here. Set them aside and then you would replace what is out there. So then again, because there's three of these out there, we could take those, set them aside and then replace them. One, two, three. But now you would have to select one of those. The game, tr the end of the game will trigger when you've got no more tiles. So you take, sorry, you take one of your tiles here and then you replace it and there's no more tiles over here in your stack that you began with based on your player number. Everyone should have the same amount of turns. I think it's in the realm of 20. So you should, uh, you can count up if you want to, but as long as you counted out the uh, correct number at the beginning of the game, you should look over at your supply. You shouldn't really have any left if you counted correctly. Uh, and then you're going to go on to scoring. So this is our scoring pad right here. We're going to score for each animal based on what they've got. The W down here is just the uh, total for the top section up here. And then we're going to score for each of these terrain types. So you're going to look at your terrain and you're going to score for the largest single area that you have. So if I've got this right here, let's say, 
I've got this one green right here, but then I've got three up here that are connected. So I'm gonna get three points for that. And this one that's alone wouldn't count at all. So it's just the largest area. The same over here for the water. I've got two of these that are in one area. And then I've got this one that's not, and this one that's not. So these two wouldn't count, but these two would count as two points. So you're gonna write down all of those. And then depending on your play, player count, there are bonus points for whoever has the most of each of those as well. So that's how those are going to work. And lastly, you're going to score up your points for any of the pine cones you have left. Each of those is going to be one point. This up here, the H, is just the total of these right here, including those bonus points that you can get. And that will be your grand total. So that is how you play Cascadia. Extremely simple, straightforward game, just with a few of those little rules that can be hard to uh, remember, what you can do with the pine cones and different things like that. I do really like this game, the fact that you've got all of these different cards, so you can change up what's out here quite a bit. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of Cascadia. All right, guys, moving on to some tips. Cascadia, what I would say is, I don't think there's really a great Fox option out there. It's kind of sad because there's oftentimes like the fox is the only thing out there. It's like the only option near the end of the game. There's so many foxes coming out because no one wants to take them because they're bad. They're just really not that great. So something that I've done, this is just a little house rule you can maybe do if you want, is we have said foxes are going to be the same this game as elk or foxes are going to be the same as bears. And so you can copy and paste it over to where it feels like it's a little bit better of a balanced game. That's one thing uh, that I just recommend if you play and you come to the same conclusion. Maybe you like some of the fox options out there, um, but that's something that I just think has been a decent rule to go along with for the foxes. So that would be, if you're not going to do that, that's one of my tips is don't go for foxes. Don't take a fox unless you absolutely have to. They're by far worth the least amount of points for how much work you have to put into them. Something I often like to do is if we're playing with the A's, I really like the Hawks. I think it's fairly easy to get a lot of Hawks that are not next to each other. Also the Salmon, it's kind of the same thing, but in reverse. Being able to have all the Salmon together can be really easy and helpful. Another thing that obviously, uh, if you're able to combine everything, it's really nice to be able to combine the things you're doing with these cards and the terrain types. And sometimes you're just not able to do it. And so I would say lean more heavily on trying to accomplish some of your goals with the cards out here, the animals, as opposed to the terrain types. Terrain types you wanna keep uh, as much of the combinations together if you're able to keep the elk in line and connect the terrain types, that's perfect. If you're not able to, then I would err on the side of trying to get the elk in line or the hawks not together. Whatever your thing is you're trying to do with the animals, I feel like you get way more points from that than the terrain types. But you can get a decent amount of points from the terrain and you can get a decent amount of points to put you ahead of other people by having the bonus points and having the largest terrain types in each area. So see if you can maybe try and do that. I wouldn't, I, I don't play to where I'm looking at other people's that much, but if you wanted to go that far, you certainly can. Another thing I'd recommend is use your pine cones. I think it is much more valuable to use them to get some of the combinations of things that you want, as opposed to just getting a victory point for each one at the end. So those are my tips for this game. This is a great game. I really enjoy playing it. Whether I win or lose, it's a game I always have a great time. Just making my own little thing. It is a fun one. So get out there and enjoy, hopefully a little bit more, your next game of Cascadia. Thanks a bunch.